Thanks so much for the nice introduction and the invitation. I'm very happy to be here to present what the Swiss National Science Foundation is doing to advance gender equality in research. Mm -hmm. What I would like to do actually in this presentation is to demonstrate that uh, gender equality is a key concern of the Swiss National Science Foundation. Well, we are a research uh, funding organization, as you might be aware, not performing organization. Mm -hmm. And to show the, what we call the many small steps that we are undertaking uh, to support um, gender equality and that we think are necessary um, to advance the things um, can I use this one? Should be the green uh, one. Uh -huh. Yeah. So let me just uh, briefly start uh, with some facts and figure about our organization. As I just mentioned, we are the um, research funding organization in Switzerland. There is another smaller funding agency that uh, covers mainly applied research, but we really promote scientific basic research on behalf of the Swiss Confederation, including all disciplines. We invest in young scientists with many different uh, funding schemes. What is also relevant is that we uh, enable research stays abroad, a very strong uh, focus of us. We promote international cooperation and uh, last but not least, we promote gender equality. We actively promote gender equality. This is uh, also written down in our mission statement on gender equality between women and men. Um, this also has to do, or one of our strengths is, as I said, that we are promoting research on behalf of the Swiss Confederation. So we are also bound, or we are supported by the Swiss uh, Constitution and by laws that force us to actually engage in everything. Um, I just, I come back to this a bit later. This is maybe difficult to understand on first sight, but these are the bodies that we have in our org organization. Um, on the left-hand side, the blue one is the, one of the smaller bodies, but very important because it makes strategic decisions. Um, uh, it, is con it consists of a representative from research community, but also from politics and industry. Then the orange bubble is National Research Council, who evaluates and makes funding decisions. So this is mainly composed of researchers working at Swiss higher education institutions. Mm -hmm. And then we have the green bubble. It's uh, bodies who are decentralized at Swiss uh, higher education institutions. They evaluate and select certain funding instruments, mainly at uh, um, pre-doctoral and uh, early postdoctoral level. So, uh, of course, uh, what I wanted to highlight uh, briefly is the, the, the balance between men and women working in these uh, different bodies. Mm -hmm. On the next slide, uh, you can see, well, we have, uh, as, as all other funding agencies, we have a lot of different instruments to support research um, and research careers. But here we have categorized them uh, to make it more understandable for you. Uh, you can see that we spent in 2017 uh, 1 billion Swiss francs in total. A uh, large amount goes to project funding, so this is uh, uh, money that goes to projects. And here, um, those who are familiar with the Swiss system might know that we are very um, much bottom-up uh, focused. So projects and careers, these are uh, usually projects that are su um, suggested by the researchers themselves, open, no restrictions in the calls those who are familiar with the European uh, landscape, kind of ERC uh, type, MSCA type of funds. This is important for us to, to observe what this means. Uh, the programs, the green one, this is more top down, uh, decided with, with, uh, with calls and political interventions, designing the out uh, line of the programs. So to understand better also what it means for gender equality when you have uh, more bottom-up research and more top-down research that is funded. Um, 
interesting here, of course, but this is maybe not a surprise to you or to uh, um, that in the careers uh, section we have uh, we have uh, around 39% uh, of uh, funds that go to women, whereas in the projects it's only 21. So it's uh, the almost double. Uh, that we have women in the career funding instruments compared mm. to the project funding. The best, um, well, the, the most balanced uh, situation we can find in science communication with 44% uh, of women being funded in this section, but it's a very small one. Uh, worse is the research infrastructures. Um, I'd like to zoom in uh, to, to the projects the, that I just mentioned. So these uh, bottom-up projects that can be submitted. And uh, you can see that currently, well, this is uh, the numbers from 2017 again. We have 16,000 projects ongoing. So not the, the funds that we, um, the decisions that we make, but ongoing. And uh, this is also not a surprise to you that uh, when you look at the biological age, you can very well see that we have uh, more and more men in projects uh, the, the older they are. Mm. So this is the situation that we, or some statistics uh, from our organization, in which context are we actually working in? Here I just wanted to briefly uh, show you the, the, the known um, um, graph um, because of course when funding you operate in a close uh, interlinkage with the whole system with other stakeholders um, with research performing organizations so uh, as you can see Switzerland fares better when we look at PhD graduates in a European comparison but um, we have very low numbers of uh, women in professorships this is a snapshot from uh, the Sheaf Figures 2015. When we look at the progress, we see progress. Uh, we have more women in uh, academia, more women on professorships. It's a slow but a steady ri rise in numbers. So uh, we hope that uh, we can go on uh, and, and improve the numbers. I want to now come to, to the two core points of this presentation. What do we do internally within our organization? But then uh, in the third point, more uh, specifically, what kind of instruments do we have to, uh, to support gender equality and research funding? But let me start what we do internally. Um, this is the, a whole bunch of uh, instruments that we have or or approaches. Uh, here I might highlight the Gender Equality Commission uh, who contributes to our gender mainstreaming. It's an advisory body and uh, Gary Loke who did the keynote speech yesterday, mm. he is for example a member of this mm. uh, Gender Equality Commission. Um, Gender balance on boards, that's why I actually uh, showed you the, the slide with the bubbles. There you could see that this strategic uh, body uh, fared quite well in comparison to other bodies. This is because, uh, well, or we hope that is because we have the prefer preferential rule for elections in the research council, 40% um, women quota in the foundation council. So this is good because it's strategic. We want to have more women in there but uh, we haven't managed to increase numbers of women in other bodies so far. So let me come to the specific measures that we have in place at our organization. Um, also here I just want to highlight the, let's say, the, the, the set of measures that we have and I invite you if you're interested to go on our website and to check out the different instruments in the following. I will uh, focus on those who are highlighted in green. Um, they are very different in scope and, and, and size. For example, the gender equality grant under career promotion. These are um, 
it's, it's a small financial uh, contribution to women only. It's thousand Swiss francs per year to support them in their career development. So they can use the money for uh, career counseling, for uh, participating in mentoring programs. Um, it's quite open, so they can use it uh, for whatever they want. Um, the, the, on the program, NCCR, the, these are the National Centre for Competence in Research. It's um, one of the instruments that we have in the programme sector, so the top-down steered um, type of funding instruments. Um, these are lar large consortia. And here the interesting thing is that they need to have a gender policy in their proposal. Mm. Um, we had Russell Loveridge yesterday in a conversation. Unfortunately, I was not here to participate. I don't know what you talked about, but he is working in an NCCR on digital fabrication and is responsible, as far as I understood, for th this whole gender policy and the implementation of the measures mm -hmm. that they do within this huge program. Mm -hmm. Extend just to highlight another uh, smaller uh, thing under the work life balance. We have extension of eligibility window. This is a very new measure, it has been adopted in September 2018, so just uh, well, last month um, under the career funding. Before we had uh, more or less strict rules that concerned the um, possible extension that you could apply to. I mean, uh, when we talk about until when after your PhD can you apply for a certain funding instrument and when you, for example, gave birth to a child, you could ask for more time to still be eligible to uh, apply to a certain funding instrument. It has been very rigid in the past. One year was the maximum that you could ask for. This has been uh, flexibilized now. Um, it's more open uh, for different kinds of reasons, but for example, when you give birth to a child after your doctorate, the standard extension is 18 months that you have more to apply for funding instruments. So we are very happy with this new flexibilization. The work-life uh, balance measures, they are, let's say, cross-cutting. Uh, they can be, it's really supporting measures that can be asked for in different funding schemes, um, whereas the others are a bit more specialized. I invite you also to have a look at the Science Europe publication that mm. was uh, released in 2017, uh, the Practical Guide to Improving Gender Equality. There you can find a lot of best practice examples. Uh, the Swiss National Science Foundation is uh, present there in the guide with a lot of uh, best practice examples. So let's come to one of the three um, main issues that I want to present you today, the PRIMA instrument. It targets excellent female researchers from Switzerland and abroad who aspire to professorship in Switzerland. It's a women-only program. Only women can apply. Um, it's uh, for funding up to five years. You can see the amount of money that uh, women or grantees can get. It includes their personal salary, but also project costs. And um, the, the requirement is that you have a PhD or MD PhD or an equ equivalent uh, qualification to, uh, to apply for this. This is a relatively new instrument. We have had the, sec the first call last year. The second call is open right now until November. Mm. And uh, it's something that we uh, closely observe what's happening. The first call, uh, we had 189 applications and we could fund 22. Mm. It's nice, uh, um, uh, very positive that there was so much interest, but what uh, concerns us is that the success rate was only 12%, um, which is lower than many other funding instruments. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, we have a, a funding instrument that is a bit similar, a bit less attractive in financial terms, but targets more or less the same age group, and there we have a success rate of 19%. Uh, for professorship schemes, uh, we even had 16%, so compared with 12%, it's uh, 
well, we yeah, it, it's nice that uh, there is so so much interest. The main purpose of Prima is to avoid the drop off of excellent female researchers, bolster women's transition into professorship. I just said that there is a very similar funding scheme, Ambizione, for those of new, know, you who, who, who know the context. Um, with, with this other funding scheme, once you get a professorship, you cannot take the funds from Ambizione funding to your professorship. With Prima, it's possible. So uh, this is also a way of um, well, making the instrument more attractive and hopefully to raise the number of female professors in Switzerland. We aim to include non-linear career paths. So you're eligible for this instrument between two and 10 years after PhD. And uh, we hope to select the most promising women researchers. As I said, we are closely observing how this instrument works out. The, for the first call, the earliest starting date was September 2018. And, uh, now, with this success that we had, we tried to increase the budget and to have a success rate of uh, between 15 and 20 percent for the second call. But let's see. What we also have to observe is uh, what happens to other funding instruments. Is there a negative effect uh, uh, on women applications, women applications for other funding uh, instruments, such as the Ambizione instrument? A second thing that I want to introduce to you is the flexibility grant. Um, here I maybe have to mention in advance that costs for external childcare are extremely high in Switzerland. Mm. And uh, we have observed not only in academia but in other contexts that this can be very uh, um, penalizing for, for women above all. Um, they have to choose whether to engage even in employment and academic employment is usually less well paid than other employment. So here we try to find something to make it possible for those who want to uh, engage in academic research, but also to engage in childcare or to have uh, family duties, to, to have family, to combine both of them. This flexibility grant is actually not only open for women, but also for men. As you can see on the slide, um, it's possible to reduce your uh, working time to 80%. Also, maybe for the context, for those who are not familiar with the Swiss system, in, in Switzerland it's very common to, uh, to work part-time at not only 50% or 100%, but uh, different shades of part-time engagement. Um, in order to not hinder the academic career, uh, we said that at least 80% is necessary, but then uh, you can, with the additional money from the flexibility grant, you can either hire an assistant to help you with your academic work, or you can uh, remain in your academic position and uh, cover your childcare costs. To give you an example, 2017, we um, had, we supported uh, 45 grants, or we handed out 45 grants. Six of them went to men and 39 to women. I'm already coming to the last section, what's next? Because the intervention that I'm going to present to you now is right now in the pipeline. We will, uh, it will be launched next year, early 2019. But um, I already want to introduce it to you. So it's called Spirit Grants. It's a collaborative research projects with researchers from partner countries in uh, uh, in DAC, um, in, on the DAC list. So it's kind mm -hmm. of a development cooperation uh, projects that will be supported. You, c you have here the indications on the financial scope of the project. But um, what is maybe more interesting for our context, talking about gender equality, is how we managed to uh, include certain elements in this new instrument. So what we have is that um, there is no quota. So we are not there yet, 
but at least we have in the new regulation that if there are equally um, evaluated projects, um, those will uh, be given preference um, who have uh, more gender balance or uh, come from a female applicant. Um, another thing is that within the evaluation committee, there needs to be a gender equality expert now. And this might seem <laughs> very uh, not so interesting, but uh, from the internal, I dare to say amongst us that it's kind of a revolution mm -hmm. to have a gender expert in, integrated in gender evaluation, in, in the project evaluation committees of this thing. Mm. Gender awareness in research context, content is encouraged but not required. So, uh, as I said, this is a very new instrument. Of course, it's not very huge in size of the financial volume, um, uh, but we have used this new instrument to, to test out certain things. Uh, the, the spirit regulation was adopted in August 2018, so it's also very new. The first call, as I said, beginning of 2019. And of course, we hope to learn from this experience and maybe to, to decrease barriers, to decrease stereotypes about certain things, and then maybe hopefully to go on also integrating some things into other instruments. I'd like to close my overview with uh, just a short reflection on what's next. I already mentioned the introduction of SPIRIT, this new program. Very important for us is also that we have the commitment from the highest levels um, of the Swiss National Science Foundation to have gender equality as a priority in the next multi-year program, so speaking of 2021 to 24. Um, we will see how this will materialize, but this political commitment is important also to, to um, further our instruments and measures. As you can maybe see from, what I, from the mix that I presented, I, I wouldn't say that we have one big solution or one uh, revolutionary solution, but we rather pursue the, the way of small steps, mm -hmm. having different measures, uh, and making them as flexible as possible for the different needs. So we think that this is really necessary to pursue this, these small steps, of course, in collaboration with other actors from the system. As I said, many of you represent the research performing organizations. We all have our jobs to do, and uh, it's, it's good that we all work within our domain of responsibility and work together. Mm. Another thing that we will do is to uh, m more better analyze the impact and utility of mobility. So we have, as I said, we have a lot of uh, mobility instruments, but we want to know and understand better what the gendered effects are. So what are the benefits or maybe how does it penalize, um, let's say, women or mm -hmm. other groups? Uh, and here, um, I'd like to um, just uh, refer back to the keynote speech that we had this morning. Mm. Uh, I think we need more research to understand better what works and what works not. Particularly for this one, if you have good ideas, um, please approach me, appro mm. approach us. Uh, we are looking uh, towards uh, exchanging best practices, uh, how to really uh, understand yeah. these things better. Um, and also for the other things, ideas are welcome. Yeah, sure. So, thank you very much for your patience. No problem. Mm -hmm. And we'll also be hearing more from Professor Rice. He'll be in a panel coming up in a little while um, mm. with the other panelists that's just about to follow you. But just quickly, we had about three, four minutes in case anyone had any specific burning questions, notes observations. Just on the Spirit Awards that you mentioned, um, when, peop when you say next year from January, February, or when would they start being, you're not sure? I cannot say, no. All right, but within the year, and people could just look up Spirit Awards in Switzerland, or is there a specific site or something? Because um, that sounds maybe interesting we have a new female <laughs> researchers. <laughs> we have a newsletter, so uh, I encourage you to sign we up. We have a, uh, a newsletter. newsletter. Oh, okay. I mm. do see one burning question. Oh, I see two burning questions. Quick. Mm. 
<laughs> Hi. Short time. Uh, Chris Pauley from the Maastricht uh, University. Uh, I asked the same question to the NWO, uh, which is the Dutch funding agency uh, mm -hmm. presentation. Mm -hmm. They do exactly the same, put 40% uh, uh, females, or at least, onto uh, panels. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you tackle the fact that we have few researchers who are eligible to sit on these panels and then require so many people above the percentage of the population to sit on the panels that then you're taking people out of doing research and typically these activities, while very useful, are not the things that lead to promotion mm -hmm. and don't get any reward. So you're actually taking women away from the things that get them further in their career mm -hmm. uh, in order to uh, meet this quota. Thank you very much for this uh, comment. I think it's more a comment than a question. Uh, I think uh, we who work in this domain, we are all aware of this uh, danger of overloading, overcharging women with more things that are not adequately rewarded when it comes to research promotion. Um, as I said, we only have the, the kind of quota or soft quota approach when it comes to the strategic decision board. So this is a very small uh, body within the organization and it's also composed of people coming from uh, politics and, and industries. Hmm. For the other bodies we don't have and that's actually also why I mentioned the context that we work in and that's the same for almost all countries. So we have this, uh, the baseline that is just so thin that makes it difficult for us as a funding organization to increase the women percentages in applications or in evaluation committees. I, I think I fully agree with you that we need to be very careful with this. Okay. And just quickly, the second question, and then we'll have to move on. Thank you. Hi, uh, Tamsin Majerus, University of Nottingham in the UK. Uh, we heard a bit yesterday about um, the definition of excellence and how we decide what is excellent mm -hmm. and, and how it should be equitable. Um, and I wondered, when you're evaluating applications, what uh, allowance you make for the career break that a woman might have had in, um, in her career to the point where she's applying for one of your mm -hmm. uh, programs. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I mean, there we also have to, to look that different funding instruments are evaluated in different places. So for those who are evaluated decentralized at the individual universities, there it very much depends on the organization, but many of them they have gender equality offices who train uh, committees. I mean, there again, we can discuss uh, whether this is beneficial or rather the country. Um, many of them have approaches, uh, either a gender equality expert sits in evaluation committees looking with this per specific perspective. Uh, um, you have specific... Uh, um, uh, guidelines saying that, or I mean, we all know the discussion, the, 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 the baby paper, how much is the baby worth, uh, the, the, the calculation of months that you can then attribute to this, um, different approaches to this question. Um, we try to make sure at the national level that we support these kind of decentralized decision-making structures. At the national level, we have, uh, so as far as I know, we have uh, certain kind of trainings for the evaluation committees, um, also using material that has been developed at the European level. Mm -hmm. um, let me think what else I could mention. As I said, so far we don't have gender experts sitting in evaluation committees, mm -hmm. so it's really the responsibility of the whole group to think of this, and this is often a challenge. Yeah, great. Um, if it's only if it's super quick, mm -hmm. the purple jumper, pink, because we're over time almost. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Very quickly, um, Leslie Hughes, Macquarie University in Sydney. Um, have any funding agencies that you know of um, instituted what I think would be a very powerful lever, which would be to require all institutions from which grant proposals are coming to put forward at least 40% from women. Mm. Because if they did impl do that, I think it would be a very powerful message to universities and other institutions mm. to make sure that they supported women in their mm -hmm, applications. Mm -hmm. I think Ireland is going into kind of this direction. Mm. Um, but I, uh, I don't remember exactly which council um, 
but I remember that there were discussions for the career funding instruments that there has to be a certain quota of women applicants, and this had a very beneficial effects for the funding. Um, uh, I think you can look it up or approach me. I can look up the details, but uh, check the Irish case. Uh, this is very interesting to follow. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks so much. Thank you for that intervention. Mm. Thanks so much.